What up, what up, Wimbush here. And today I got a special video for you guys. We're gonna be taking a look at the brand new HP ZBook Fury G8. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. So the nice folks over at HP have sent me out this brand new laptop. They said this Fury in particular was created just for CG artists so we could run a ton of 3D programs. We could do our compositing, our VFX, etc. And so they gave it to me to run it through the paces and give my honest review of it. But before I do that, I actually wanted to showcase this laptop for you guys to check out. And so if I go to their website right here, we can come down and look at some of the specs. So as I was saying, this is the HP ZBook Fury G8. And let's scroll down and see what we have in this laptop here. In this particular machine, we have the Intel i9 for the GPU. We actually have the NVIDIA RTX A5000 inside this laptop here. You could do up to 128 gigs of RAM, but in this particular machine, you'll start off with 32 gigs. And I'll show you how to upgrade here in a bit because it's really cool on how easy it is to upgrade the different components in this one. So carrying on, we can add storage up to 8 TB. Again, I'll show you guys how we can upgrade this, but it gives you one TB to start off with. It's VR ready, which is cool because I'm gonna be doing some more VR content here in the future. And then scrolling down, you can see all the different inputs and outputs that we have. So we have an SD slot, we have HDMI, we have a couple of Thunderbolt ports here. We have two USB ports here and we have an ethernet port here, you know, along with a headphone jack as well. And if I keep scrolling down, this is the cooling component in it. Again, I'm gonna flip it over and it's showing you how to upgrade. And I'll physically show you guys this as well, but the cool thing about this notebook is we can actually upgrade it as I alluded to before with 128 gigs of RAM and eight terabytes of hard drive space. Now in this machine, we have several options. So if you wanna upgrade your hard drive space, you can have up to four M.2 drives in here, or if you have a traditional SSD drive in there, you can add one traditional SSD drive plus two M.2 drives in there. And again, it has several different slots for adding up to 128 gigs worth of RAM. And as you can see in this little video that they have here, this is how easy it is to pull it off, but I'll show you guys here in a bit how we could do it ourselves. And the last thing I wanna point out on this machine is the display. It's one of those things you really have to see it to believe it. It's hard to show you guys on video, but this particular monitor, they actually worked alongside DreamWorks to come up with something that's really crystal clear for 3D artists. It has 120 refresh rate on here. That makes everything look really smooth. And if I scroll down here a little bit as well, you can see that it has an 8-bit display that gives you 1 billion colors on the screen at any given time. So I had to switch the camera to the overview because I wanted to give you guys a look at the back here and how easy it is to upgrade this machine. So let me just flip this over right here. And so the first thing you're gonna see is this lever as you saw in the demo on the website. So I'm just gonna scroll it over till I see the red and then I can actually just push down on this and lift it up. Easy as that. And then again, we have the fans here for the vapor cooling and everything. And then you see we have some of the slots here. We have the dim slots in which you'll need just like a regular screwdriver, nothing crazy, not like, you know, other laptops where you need like special tools to pull this thing apart. This is very simple. And so let me actually pull off the battery here so we can see what's underneath here as well. So I'm sliding that over till I see the red. We have a little latch here that I could pull up on. Let's take this battery out and there we go. So you can see that we have some of the M.2 slots. We have the traditional SSD slot here as well. So if you did wanna upgrade it, it's as easy as just pulling it apart and putting in place the stuff that you need. But I just wanted to show you guys how easy it is to upgrade this machine. But enough of me throwing specs at you. Let's see how this thing performs using software like Cinema 4D, Redshift, Unreal Engine, and Blender. So I did run a couple of benchmarks on this particular machine here. The first one I'm gonna show you guys is Cinema 4D. So this is the Cinebench here. It's using version R23. That's the latest for the Cinebench. But I ran a couple of tests right here. You can see that we could do CPU with multi-core and CPU with single core. So I'll start off with the multi-core. You can see right here, it scored around number four in which the Threadripper, you know, that scored at the top. But for a mobile system, for it to come in at number four, I mean, that shows the powerfulness of this portable system here. And then let's go over to the single CPU because I think these specs are gonna kinda make you guys surprised as well. So right there, if I'm using the single core CPU, it's actually ranking at number one, which is crazy because it's actually ranking above the AMD Ryzen Threadripper, which I have on my standard unit that I use on my desktop. So spec-wise, this thing will perform at Cinema 4D really, really well. I can't wait to dive in it and actually use it, you know, on client work and stuff like that. But for now, 
these are the Cinebench scores and I think it scores pretty well. Now, I know a lot of you guys out there, you're not doing a standard render with Cinema 4D. You're probably using something like Redshift. So let's run a benchmark on that. But if you don't know how to run the benchmarks on Redshift, let me actually show you in case you wanna take these results and compare it against your own. So right now I'm inside the File Explorer. All I'm gonna do is go to my C drive and I need a folder here called Program Data, but it's not gonna be there by default because it's actually a hidden file. So to do that, what we're gonna do is come over here to View. And then I'm gonna look for hidden items, which is right here. I'm gonna check mark this off. And now we have our folder here called program data. So I'm gonna double click on this and I should have a Redshift folder in here. So if you have Redshift installed, this is where you wanna go. And then you wanna come up here to where it says bin. And then I wanna find the benchmark right here. So run benchmark, I'm gonna double click on this and then the command prompt should pop up. And these are the results that we get whenever we ran the benchmark for Redshift here. Now this right here is an interactive benchmarking demo called The Attic by NVIDIA. I'll leave a link down below if you guys wanna try it out for yourselves, but I'm gonna run it here on the ZBook to see how it performs. For this demonstration, I'm actually gonna use my Xbox controller, which is hooked up to this laptop using Bluetooth, which is really cool in itself. So let me see, let me actually move the arrow out of the way. So there we go. So I'm actually using my controller to move around in the scene here. And we could pull up this bounce gun here, which shows this lighting using RTX, how it's interacting with the environment. If I look up in the right hand corner, that's actually the frame rate of what's going on right now. Now I ran this demonstration earlier. I was actually able to get a full 60, but since I'm running OPS on here, I don't know if OBS is actually interfering with the demo right here, but I was able to pull up solid 60 frames per second earlier. Let me actually switch cameras. So we can see what it looks like with direct illumination. And if you look in the top left-hand corner, there's actually the different cameras that I'm going through, just kind of showing, you know, this is what ray tracing looks like on here, showing you the frame rates, come over to camera two, global illumination, and camera one, this is our main camera here. So let me see what happens with RTX off. So you can see the frame rates jump up depending on where we are in here. I did see jump, yeah, see we're at 83, 78, but it looks a lot better with RTX on. And the last benchmark that I ran, this is by Blender. This is a piece of software that I particularly don't use, but I know a lot of you guys use it out there, especially because it's free. I see a lot of comments down on my channel of people asking me to do Blender stuff. So especially with Blender 3 coming out, it is something I'm looking into, but let me run the specs on this machine to kind of see where this falls and if I can use Blender on here as well. So these are the results that I got for the GPU. Again, I would take this benchmarking tool, run it against your own system, see if it stacks up with these numbers, but I also ran it against the CPU as well, which took a little bit longer, but let's take a look at those numbers here. And with the CPU, of course, the rendering times are gonna be a lot higher because you know Blender can use GPU rendering in there. And so depending on what you're trying to do, I would go with the GPU, but these are still some impressive numbers here. Now, I don't wanna keep throwing benchmark numbers at you. I just want to give you an overview of how powerful this machine is. But of course, I'm gonna be running this on my channel, doing tutorials. I'm gonna use client work with this just to kind of run it through its paces. So make sure you stick to this channel to see how this is gonna perform because I'm gonna actually do a review maybe in like a month or two, just to kind of give you guys an honest opinion on how I like this machine. And plus, I don't know if a lot of you know, but back in the day, I actually was an award-winning virtual reality artist. I've done stuff with Mixmaster Mike, Mark Christopher Lawrence, the Special Olympics. And so, since I'm working with HP, they gracefully sent me this VR headset that will run with this laptop. So this is the HP G2, in which I'm probably gonna do an unboxing on this as well. But the cool thing is, this is using Windows Mixed Reality as its base there. So I can actually hook this up to this machine. And since this machine is VR ready, I could do VR experiences on here as well. So I'll probably get into Unreal Engine using this, you know, building out my own scenes and showing you guys how we could run our own scenes using VR with this headset here. And not only that, I'm actually getting back into motion capture as well with another surprise. I have the x suit here. This is a Wanda suit. And so I already have the software hooked up on here. I'm going to be doing some motion capture, showing off the Wanda suit. And since I need a lot of room, I don't know if you guys have seen the motion capture stuff that I've done in the past. I've done stunts jumping on 
air mattresses and other crazy stuff. And so having a mobile workstation actually worked perfect with this because I'm able to go, you know, out into bigger places. My office is small and, you know, do all the type of stuff that I need to do with motion capture. So I can't wait to start using a Wanda suit with the Z-Book here as well. So that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Hopefully this overview gave you a good look at this machine here. It's 15 inches, so it's a nice decent size if I need to take it out. I'm gonna be doing some more in-person talks here, hopefully at conferences like NAB and SIGGRAPH, maybe Adobe Max. And so whenever I'm out on the road, I do need a powerful laptop because I still do client work as well. So hopefully this is something that I can use when I'm out on the road, especially when I'm doing, you know, like motion capture demonstrations and things of the like. So if this video helped you out, or you're interested in seeing more stuff like this, make sure you leave me a comment down below. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. And until next time, stay fresh, keep creating, and I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll see you soon. Take care. Thank you. What up, what up? Wimbush here.